drawn to the dust. Somehow, your soul is being drawn to the dust. Somehow, it's like something is drawing your soul to just be neutral. The fire, just something is just happening that you just want to be normal. You just, you just want to sleep. You, you just want to get back from work and watch TV till you sleep off. You, you just want something prompt you to pray in the night. Like I beg, I have to wake up in the morning. I have to drive. I, 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 let me just say short devotion and just move on. Something prompt you to read the Bible. You're like, well, I'm too busy. There's a program going on before I used to listen to the programs, you need to tune into messages. You can't even remember the last time you sat down to listen to a full message, except a few times when we were in traffic. My God, my soul cleaves to the doors, quickening down me. Can we lift up our voices and make that prayer tonight? By your word, quicken me. It seems as if in this part of the world, my soul wants to cleave to the dust. Makata baraka beko manaya, alkaka bekoto, zevena kiapare, reven tabaku baraska. This is maybe not how you used to be. Maybe something has gone on that has doused your fire. This is an opportunity. This is a chance. This is a space. This is a this is a, a window opened by God to cause there to be a quickening, a quickening, a reawakening, a reviving, a revitalizing. Apana kapara zopora mata bene kaikupa shevene katuzuba rapan de ketus kabara valiata meke bakatutu kovaratas e bene kemama e bene kemamaza zedendras kabrisko baratambaba apaka poro zekede kapakaba lindos kambali varapaka el barapaka. Some people had to get two jobs, they had to get two jobs to pay the bills, but in between those two jobs, there is no time for God, there is no energy for God, there is no mental capacity for God, so they cannot truly love the Lord with all their heart and all their soul and all their mind, because somehow they've been neutralized. Some people came into this land with dreams of how they would do this and do that and take over for God, and somehow they've been dropping the bar, they've been reducing the standards little by little. Here and there, little foxes coming in. It might be just the fox of, 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 of going to a gathering and you want to blend in, and you, and you you want to be among that you don't want to be put aside. Can you pray, Lord, quicken me according to thy word? Rabba baka to bela brama baka babiatane el veruska bwata beke baka baka marapato me quicken me according to thy word. I'm not here for child's play. There seems to be something going on. There seems to be something going on. Ari Samara Egere Baraba Tukai Embres Kavala Patakaba. In Jesus' name, let, let me say this before. Before we pray a little bit more, and I'm sure our dad is getting ready to, to step in any time, any moment from now. But this is the scripture that scares me. Let, let me let me let me put it this way. When Jesus was taking the Last Supper, uh, around that period when he was about to go to the cross, he said, is, "The Son of Man is going to be betrayed." Sure, he says, "But woe to him! It was better for him that he should not have been born." Now, you would think that Judas heard that statement and would have been corrected somehow. Somehow, he went ahead. And that's so scary because there are some other prophecies that Jesus has said. <laughs> and it's just going to be bad if you are now going to be the one to fall into the category of that prophecy. Two of sorts are one we read in Matthew chapter 5. He says, the salt is meant to season the earth. He says, but if the salt loses its savor, sir, if you are listening to me and there has been a drop in your savor, if you are listening to me and the only time you fellowship with God is, is you, before you were never missing a weekly service, but now you, you that you never used to miss weekly services, you, you don't even what's weekly services. What, what, what's that? What, what do you mean by go to church on the, on the weekday? Or on Sunday, you even find sometimes reasons not to go, sir. If the salt loses its savor, the Bible says it's good for nothing but to be trodden under feet and stepped upon. It's it's like it's like it's it's yeah, kaparamata. It's so scary that the only use that heaven will find you for is that men should trample upon you. God forbid. He says in the end days, in the last days, the love of many will wax cold. It's a prophecy. It's the same way the prophecy came about somebody will betray Jesus. Now, I don't know about you, but I just don't want to be the one to feed that prophecy. So I'm crying to the Lord, Lord, quicken me according to your word. Quicken me according to your word. In Nigeria, we deliberately made an intentional point. Me and my wife, we said we will not buy TV because we want to have more time for family. We want to have more time for you know, other things. 
we got here and we saw <laughs> some things. We said, well, my not, my not hot. We bought the TV. I started noticing after a while that, ah, so this is why people like TV. Oh, this, I didn't know. I, this, this thing is interesting. You know? There are too many programs on this Netflix. There are too many. <laughs> I, I didn't know because, because what I had done in Nigeria was to build a system around my life such that even if I wanted to, I couldn't. Even if I wanted to waste time, I couldn't because I'd build that system. And here it was, well, well let's just give it a shot. I don't know whether he's the prince of Canada. I don't know. I don't know what was happening. But somehow my soul was cleaving. My soul was, was yearning. My soul was yearning. Let me just relax. That in Nigeria, I was in this place in church. I was this, you know, this, that. And now is your time to rest. You just want to cross like and say, well, uh, no, no more service. Ah, God, quicken me according to your word. This soul of mine is trying to cleave to the dust. Psalm 119 verse 25. Quicken down me according to thy word. Quicken down me according to thy word. After this meeting tonight, let there be a fire that has been stirred up. Everything that has been lost, every territory in my walk with you, every territory in my walk with you that I have been lost to the enemy. Oh God, every, every, every waste of time, every little fox that wants to eat up the vine, everything that wants to eat up that great light that you've placed, everything that wants to eat up those kingdom dreams and agenda. Those things I want to whisper to my ear and make me just normal. I say, hey, don't stand out. Just stay. Hey, don't draw attention to yourself. Oh, just, 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 just mind your business in this Canada. No, Lord, quicken me by your word. Quicken me. Quicken me tonight. Quicken us tonight. Quicken us tonight. Let negative prophecy not be fulfilled on our head. Let negative prophecy of love waxing cold, of salt being useless, that the salt will now be due to, oh, God, Quicken me, apana kopele safilaya. Quicken me, O God. Quicken me. Quicken us. Ba akato koma bele baraska patamaya ai kokoa. Quicken me according to Thy word. Rishi na kune manana abanta kabiatevela. In the name of Jesus. Oh, praise God. Our daddy is, is here and said to speak to us tonight. Um, I'm so. I'm so eager to receive the word. And my faith is that by the word and the, the exhortations and the teachings that come tonight, there will truly be a quickening. That's my belief. And I, and I want you to also hold on to that, that Lord, tonight, I don't know, I don't care. <laughs> Just quicken me. How? I don't know. But quicken me. Quicken me. Quicken me. Quicken me. I want you to just pray in the spirit as our daddy um, um, takes over. Just pray in the spirit as Pastor Shegun takes over. Marabas kabele brandas kababaratana ebe yakusa malevedem bras kabrabalito meshko barabababa mapaka barosefene luke kai brando soba rabababa baba baga gaga lakada da brandas kabarana bayi oh voso marakadam bras kada indo dolo baras kabaradaska ibe kama baba rababaska malani in Jesus name we pray amen amen praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, it's an honor to be here again to just spend the next few minutes with us. We are very conscious of time and then we are going to make sure that uh, by the grace of God, we do justice with this little time that God has given us tonight. I want us to just pray one more time. Father, in the name of Jesus, use this vessel to send your word to my spirit. Uh, I, I want you to deliberately touch the lips of this man of God and use him to speak to my spirit. I want you to pray prayer deliberately to God and ask God to use my mouth to send a word to your soul right now. Your spirit man needs to hear God. Uh, um, uh, and, 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 then, and then send a word to him tonight and say, God, send a word. Send a word to my spirit. Send a word. Send a word to my spirit. Send a word to my spirit. Mm. Send a word to my spirit tonight in the name of Jesus. Mm. Send the word. Yema soprate kato la suta ibrados jakata de prostekata ba 
in the name of Jesus. Lord, send the word to my spirit tonight in the name of Jesus. Send the word to my spirit tonight in the name of Jesus. Send the word to my spirit tonight in the name of Jesus. Send the word to my spirit in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, send the word to my spirit tonight in the name of Jesus. And adoshate pradevadesh zakadavadeshata zoparabadavadesh zakadeba zoprandekava jekabayadash. In Jesus' name. We have prayed. Amen. The word of the Lord is coming to us. The burden before me this night is very straightforward. I have a burden for believers who have left, particularly Africa, uh, to diaspora, especially uh, not just Africa, people, believers who have left their places of abode to another uh, foreign country during this window period where it looked as if uh, all the nations that Either too far before now were difficult to enter, just suddenly opened. All those nations where uh, people had always desired to go before now, and the doors were shut, and suddenly they just opened. And uh, people had migrated from their places of abode. You know, it became quite easy. Uh, the doors were majorly opened, and people could just go uh, to any country to America, to UK, especially United Kingdom and Canada. I remember that I was reading that the, the, the Canadian government were like, they wanted about 1.5 million people, migrants to come into their country. And these things were not so before, but suddenly there was an open door. And then you could see wars like you, like, like you have in Ukraine where uh, uh, people were massively moved from a country to another country, and you find that there are a lot of believers in, the, in a lot of uh, believers in Europe are domiciled in Ukraine, and you see there's this open door to other countries, and their countries are saying, "Come in, come in. Don't worry, we'll take you in. We'll take you in." There is a hand behind all this movement, and I let you know that there is a way God works that He, he moves men. Uh, using different scenarios to move men. And somebody's listening to me right now. You don't, you, we have diverse bases for movement. We have diverse movement stories. Uh, you see, just like you have in the scriptures, there was a time in the Bible when the, in the Acts of Apostles, the Bible says there was uh, a, a kind of a famine and believers were scattered. Uh, they, 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 Jerusalem, they had to scatter them from Jerusalem. Everybody had to go to different places, Jaffa to different places. And it was because God, they were concentrated in Jerusalem with the gospel. And God, Bible says, they went everywhere preaching the gospel, everywhere they went. In the Acts of the Apostles, the Bible says they went everywhere uh, preaching the gospel. And, and, and I'd like us to, uh, let me, maybe I should quickly pick that scripture in, in Acts of the Apostles there. Uh, and then we, we could, uh, and uh, uh, we could we could take a cue from there. The Bible says they they, they went everywhere uh, preaching the gospel. Uh, in, in in Acts chapter eight, Acts chapter eight. If you read the book of Acts chapter eight, uh, the the Bible talks about uh, in Acts chapter eight, uh, verse one. The Bible says, and Saul was consenting unto his death, and at that time. There was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. You see, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered. Look at this. They were all scattered abroad. They went abroad. They traveled abroad. They had to go abroad. Everybody had to jump abroad. They were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea, UK, Samaria, Canada, and except the apostles. 
that is the key core apostles that were sitting down in Jerusalem. And the Bible talks about you know, all this. And then we go to verse 4 of that Acts chapter 8. The Bible says, and therefore, therefore, now therefore there is, is, is different for several of us. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. And then it talks about Philip now going down to the city of Samaria and preaching Christ to them. But don't forget that Philip left Jerusalem not to go to Samaria to preach the gospel. Philip left Jerusalem because there was a persecution against the church and they had to run for their lives. Now, there's a reason why Philip left Jerusalem. There's a reason why Joseph left Canaan. Joseph did not leave Canaan to go to Egypt because he wanted to go to Egypt. He left Canaan to go to Egypt because he was sold. He actually was against his will. So he was not in, in his will. He just found himself in Egypt. Now, he found himself in Egypt. Philip ran to, 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 to Samaria. And 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 uh, several other people went to different places, not necessarily because they wanted to, but because, but because, but because they had to. Now, some some the reason for for moving people differs from person to person. Whether you find yourself in UK because you just couldn't find life going forward in Nigeria, or whether you find yourself in another country because you just had to, you, you, there was a war in your country, uh, like you like from Ukraine, for example. Whether you left uh, your your domicile country because there was famine, or because there was war, or because you just uh, found yourself, or you, because you really wanted to and walked your way out, whichever way you found yourself outside your country. Listen to me. Uh, there is a hand of God behind this movement. And it's a global movement. The reason why I say there's a hand of God behind it is because it's not just you. And it's not, it's in within a particular period of time where it's obvious that God is doing something on the earth with the word of God. Now, I'll tell you that whatever level, especially my message this night, is directed especially now to every one of us, but with a special emphasis on men that have been raised by God where they were, especially men that were raised by God, were trained by God, were raised by God, and were built up and encountered by God in the country that you left to the country that you are. And you, you will not really realize this until we start going into the details tonight. I would like you to go to Ezekiel chapter 19, our major text tonight. Ezekiel chapter 19. It said, Ezekiel chapter 19 from verse 1 says, Moreover, take up a lamentation for the princes of Israel and say, What is thy mother? A lioness? She lay down among lions. She nourished her whelps among young lions. And she brought up one of her whelps. It became a young lion. And it learned to catch the prey. You see, it devoured men. This was a perfect training that was given to this young lion, the well. You see, the Bible says in verse four, the sad news, the nations also heard of him. He came in contact with the nations. He was taken in their pit. Now, I want you to underline the word, I like the word their pit. Their pit. And the word we are looking at this night is their pit. And they brought him with chains onto the land of Egypt. You see, irrespective of where he went, he landed back in Egypt. Oh, God. Egypt is a spiritual location of worldliness, carnality, just like Babylon. 
and is the place where God spiritually brought us out from. Now, what this scripture is saying is, this lioness raised a whelp, and that whelp was raised and trained and made, developed and built into a lion that can actually rend and tear things and make things happen, roar and everywhere sets up. Now, the Bible says when this lion that was trained came in contact with the nations, the nations captured it in their pit. In other words, these nations we are talking about here have a particular, they have their pits. Now, you see, these pits are, they, 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 they are not, they are, they, are, they are there already. And they, they are their they are, they are, they are, they are their neutralization system for neutralizing every lion that would have come to make havoc or change their system. So they have this pit in the midst of the financial buoyancy, economic uh, comfort, economic buoyancy, and the financial, the, 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 I mean, the upgrade of the, the availability of facilities and technology and everything available, these nations have their pits. And this young lion that was raised, when it came into the contact with the nations, it was caught in their pits. When it was caught in their pit, the Bible says, and they brought him with chains into the land of Egypt. Verse four. Now the Bible says in verse five, I am a The Bible says, when she saw that she had waited, in other words, she was expecting this lion to bring back prey. What is that talking about is that this lioness when she sent out that lion, oh Jesus, to go to the nations, she was sitting and expecting that this young lion will come back with meat, with harvest, with prey, things that he has is bringing home to, to her. And then she waited and waited and waited and waited and discovered when she saw that she had waited and hope was lost. What it means is that she saw that this lion has been caught. She's not coming back again. What we sent to bring meat has become meat. And what we sent to bring meat has become meat, has been caught in their pit. The Bible says, then she took another of her wells and made him a young lion. You see, this lioness started again, took another project and took up another project and built and raised another lion and sent that lion again. The Bible says, and he went up and down among the lines. This particular one was probably stronger. And the Bible says he became a young lion and learned to catch the prey and devour them. The Bible says, and he knew their desolate palaces. And he laid waste their cities. Now, this one was bringing results. You can see that this particular one was now bringing results. And the land was desolate. And the fullness thereof, it started doing very well. By the noise of Israel, whenever this one roared, everywhere took dressing. Wow, this was looking like a major success now. And the Bible says, verse 8, Then the nations set against him, on every side look like pressure all over the place from the provinces and spread their net over him and the bible says again he was taken in their pit he was taken in their pit 
beloved, and they put him in word in chains. Kalato in chains and brought him this time not to Egypt, but I told you to the other sister, brought him to the king of Babylon. And they brought him into holds. And look at the last part of that scripture that his voice should no more be heard upon the mountains of Israel. Beloved, tonight, we are not saying too many things. This is the message that I have from God to us tonight. I sense in my spirit that lions that have been raised by God have been, have been sent to contact the nations to bring back an harvest. I sense in my spirit that a lot of these lions all across diaspora are being caught in their pit. This pit is where every general that has been sent to change the game in these countries have ended. And the ones that God has trained and trained to be able to survive those pits. I sense there are people under the sound of my voice who have landed in the pit, the same pit that made God to open the doors of this nation so that generals that he has raised, people that have light can rush into that environment and change the system. Like the second lion was trained. The Bible says he went in among lions. He accompanied with fellow lions. He was not going to accompany with any other thing. And they devoured cities. They were changing the game in things. They were doing exploits. But all of a sudden, when pressure came, when financial pressure, this pressure, that pressure from the left, they set against it on every side. And in the end, the same thing happened. He was caught in their pit. Beloved, I see generals becoming neutralized. I see Babylon and the, the, the system of Babylon and Egypt setting up a structure and a system that snuffs out the God that heavens open the door for people to bring in, such that when they come in, that system snuffs out that fire, snuffs out that God, and replaces it with normal life of just living and living to go and die. And you see people that are sent to set a nation ablaze for God end up in a country as ordinary men. I'd like you to know that such a man as this lion was Samson. Ah. It's amazing to note that when the nations lay a net and pit for, for a great man, when they catch them, men that used to pray, when God saw a generation of Nigerians, Africans, who were given to praying and given to studying and given to religious activities and given to seeking his face and evangelism doing this. He opened the doors of nations and nations that don't have heat, nations that the gospel has run out, nations that brought the gospel down to Africa, but they have completely shut down on God. He opened their gates for economic purposes, made our own economy very tight, and opened their gates for us to run to Emmas. And sincerely, we ran. And his agenda was that when this young lion, when he goes out, he will bring back meat. Unfortunately, I am hearing in my spirit, I didn't call this meeting ever before. 
but I'm sensing the burden in the heart of God that the lions we raised and the doors we opened for those lions. Ah, the nations have set a net for them and they have been taken in their pit. The same problem that God saw that made him to open the door for nations to come into their nation. We have come in to join them in the godlessness, in the prayerlessness, sincerely, an average firebrand in Nigeria, in diaspora now, is working morning to night and there is no light on his candle. He's managing to just bear life to live. How much more to light a nation? The same mindset that has consumed the white man away from God. They are pit. The same prayerlessness that has consumed the white man. They are pit. The same lack of spending devotion with God that the white man does not even have in his schedule. They are pit. The same, unfortunately, the same attitude of not going to church. Aye. Kalemra Stokaya Ligadaya. They are pit. Seen generals neutralized within days of landing. When they come to reality of the, of the amount of bills they have to pay for their house rent. Huh? Men that had a ministry, the Bible said they had obtained a part of this ministry. And suddenly they are pit. And you know that they are pit is just one line. Sometimes. It gets so bad that pastor is now sleeping with girls. Aye. Oh, Lord. Things that you never did in Nigeria as a Christian. Oh, my God. And sometimes we just send the man of God at home some money, and then we just have a conscience that, oh, no, 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 no. Ah, firebrand. The Bible says the lioness waited and waited. The Bible says, and when she saw that she had waited, and sincerely, and all hope was lost, then she took another. I am praying that God will not replace you. I don't know who God sent me to tonight. I don't know who God deliberately made a way for you to land in it, it landing, UK landing, Germany landing, America landing. And I don't know who I'm speaking to tonight, but I'm saying that God sent men from Africa to help the church in Europe to increase the fire and God opened the doors. You know, recently I was asking, how, what does it take for me to, to, to just travel to UK? And I saw how easy it had become. And I'm like, ah, what is going on? Why is this so easy? Ah, and I heard the word in my spirit. I need men. And I'm ready to take them by all means. By crook or by anyhow. I'm ready. And, I, and when I was asking somebody, I said, this embassy, they said they need fund, proof of fund. Don't they know that Nigerians are just borrowing the fund? He said, it doesn't matter. I need men. Oh, my God. And God, by all means, made possible for people that cannot afford three square meals to pay school fees of five, ten thousand pounds. I don't know how these things are happening. And they are surviving with their families. The people that cannot, cannot travel to Kano are traveling with the whole family to UK. And they are doing it and making it happen. And yet... The reason behind the divine agenda has been collided with the neutralization agenda. You know what the devil is saying? Let them come. We will just reduce them to population. We will just use them, add them to the number. They will not impact. They will not affect. They will not change the game. My God, oh Lord. And when they're moving in their millions 
and they don't change anything, heavens give up. Heavens change that game. Oh my God. It comes to a time. It comes to a time when if they don't deliver, if they don't deliver, the Bible says like Jezebel in the book of Revelations, for I gave her a space of time to repent. When I saw that she was not repenting, I spewed her out of my mouth. For I gave her a space of time to repent. Can I tell you tonight? I would like to read that scripture that I just quoted in the book of Revelations concerning Jezebel. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 2, verse 21. It said, notwithstand, verse 20 says, notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach her to seduce my servants to commit fornication. And to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent. I see God giving us space. I see the lioness waiting for the impact this jackpot thing is going to have by the church in the, in the kingdoms and the nations of the earth. I see God giving us space, waiting and waiting for the impact a David, a Kemi, a Tinuke, a Michael, a Joseph, a Babalola, a Ayo, a, a Tunde is going to have. And sincerely, as we are speaking, people are traveling tonight. More people, the, the mass God was is, is shipping them. My prayer and my pain and the burden I see God send me to express tonight is that as God is shipping them, Babylon is neutralizing them. As God is shipping them, Babylon is inducting them. As God is shipping them, Babylon is, 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 is calming them, is, is, is annulling them, is making them as, as just as good as another number. And heavens are waiting, are waiting. The Bible says the invitation of creation eagerly await the manifestation of the sons that God shipped. There is something about you that is particular to, to do something particular in that continent that you found yourself. The Bible talks about these men who have turned the world upside down. The Bible says who passing through the valley of Baca make it a well. There's something unique about you. In Nigeria, it was not significant because there was light and fire everywhere. But when you landed where you landed, it was supposed to be significant. But you were neutralized. I see men, generals, becoming now hustlers. Men who are living by faith, now adopting the mindsets that are contrary to their reason. I'm believing that you will die here if you don't work morning to night. God does not supply in the white land. Oh, yeah. I see us adopting their theories. I see us, you know, there's something, there is a mindset of a bridge. And God trying to break some of those ungodly mindsets has brought people from a land where those mindsets don't hold, but they are being inducted. Part of the pit is fornication. Ah, I want to say it in my local dialect. I don't know why I'm feeling like saying it. Esheto in Nigeria. Ah, something you never did. The kind of carelessness you never had, we could never hear it in your life. Now that God, it looked to me that we have forgotten our real home. Your home is not even Nigeria. Your home is not Africa. Your home is not where you left. 
Your real home is heaven. And that's why the agenda of hell is no matter where you come from, when you land in those systems, there, is, there are pits. They, they have their pits. They have their pits. The question God is asking you tonight before we pray, have you been caught in their pit? Have you also become another statistic? Is there an impact that is growing or you have become another vegetable? Have you also become just another number that joined their country? No, you are not just a number, sir. You were brought in by divine providence, whether by crook or by pin or by anyhow. Whether people pushed you out of Nigeria, whether people dragged you, whether you ran away, whether you whatever, whatever, behind every terrible story that was bringing you to this place, there is still a divine hand and a divine agenda. So long as there is a light in your spirit, and you find yourself in a dark land. We have seen in scriptures that God has used persecution to scatter light into dark places. I want to read a scripture and then we pray. Anna Sopra Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. Ye are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. Salt is scattered. Salt is sprinkled and mass. But if the salt has lost its savour, not its color, its savour, the thing that makes you salt, the thing that makes you different from the environment you are going into, the uniqueness with respect to God about you that is contrary to the environment that we are putting in you inside, the savour. If salt has lost its savour, wherewith shall we be sorted? You know that why that question is that? Because <laughs> salt is different from the environment it is put. It cannot be made salt by the environment it is put. It can only be made salt from the environment it was taken. Alanano set up rakata. But when we take it from that environment and throw it into an environment it's supposed to affect and it loses its savour, that environment cannot sort it. There is loss of hope. That's what that lioness was saying. The only thing you can do for it, it is thenceforth good for not. May God not look at you and say good for not. But to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. What that meant is that it's now good to be messenger, just be sending, running, doing runs, making money, to hustling, and just be sent. Hey, hey, there are some people in this country that listen under the sound of my voice. Your own job is God didn't send you to go and hustle. You were just supposed to listen to his instruction and hear what he will tell you to do and he will arrange food for you, even by ravings, if need be. There is a divine agenda, vocation in that country that you find yourself. There is a reason why you are the first person in your history, your family lineage, to step outside the shores of Nigeria. There's something God wanted to do with your life. There's an agenda of the heavens behind living and surviving, sir. And I see you now, you no longer go to church. You sit down at home and watch service online. And you have now become a, a neutral. You are not neutral before. You are not neutral before. Your, your appearance your, or your presence is, was a threat to the kingdom of darkness in Nigeria. But now you are not a threat. You have become neutral. 
you have become nominal. You are not threatening anything. You are a lion that is like a teddy bear. He can't bite anybody. The Bible says when they caught that lioness, it says so that his voice will no longer be heard. I don't know whether you read what I read. It said, in verse 9, chapter 19 of Ezekiel, verse 9, he said that his voice should no more be heard upon the mountains of Israel. They took him to Babylon so that his voice will no longer be heard upon the mountains of Israel. I remember people who used to sing on the mountains of Israel. Yeah. People used to shout in prayers. People who used to pray in tongues on the mountains of Israel. But their voice in Babylon, that is voice. I feel like talking to a Samson this night. Where are your locks? The seven locks on your head. Where are the locks? Where you appeared in that country. All the demons were summoned. Ah, this guy is a threat. When you were carrying your bags into the airport, I imagine that the spirits of darkness were like, yeah, this is light coming here. This guy, we know him. We know him. This girl, we know her. We know her. This girl, when she prays, when she prays, she can scatter things. She can pray and carry a nation on her knees. This girl, we know her. We know her. And in two months, Demons will pass by you and say, this is not a, this is not a problem. Hey, what neutralized you also? What took your server, your bite? What took your threat? What took your light? The Bible says it was caught in their pit. And I feel people under the sound of my voice. The Bible says the greatest thing the devil wants to take from Samson Is his locks. And the Bible says that his voice should not be heard. Ah! I see silenced lions who no longer can roar because they went to Babylon. Let us pray. Let us pray tonight. You are going to get your voice back. I see people who can't pray anymore. I see people who can't shout anymore. The Bible says the shout of a king is among them. I am paradeco satan. The shout of a king is among them. The Lord is God is with him. And the shout of a king is among them. I see lions that could no longer roar. It's been a long time. You could roar in the night. I want that roar to come back to you tonight as we lift up our voice in prayers tonight. I want our roar to come back. I want Pastor David, please join me or mute your mic and join me. Let us pray together. We are going to pray in the Holy Ghost tonight in the next few minutes before we close this meeting. That roar is coming back. The grace of God on your life that was bubbling before now is coming back. The grace that made you read your Bible and study the word and seek the face of God, organize programs, do meetings, do things, gather people, cause fire to happen. That did something. Your hair is going back. Did you fall into sin? Did you fall into fornication? Your hair is coming back tonight. We are praying that the roar, let the grace to pray, the grace to pray, the grace to pray. Pray, the grace to pray. Let it come back tonight, believers. Man of Santa Nebra that your prayer life will not be reduced to that of a popular, typical white man. In the name of Jesus, that was not why you were brought there. In the name of Jesus, I'm praying for that Nigeria who God deliberately opened a way to enter into the diaspora to cause a stare. To raise a shout, to divorce, to bring kingdoms on their knees for God, who has not been silenced and been made so weak, so ordinary, so neutral. In the name of Jesus, who has now joined them, 
to commit the same thing that you were born there to change. Inga dosa to prakito pakataya. Tonight you receive your voice. No longer is your voice heard in the mountains of Israel. Receive your voice back. Receive your voice back. Receive your voice. The voice of ministry. Stand up and stop being ordinary. You are not an ordinary soldier. You are a general. Even where you are, go back to yourself. Stop being in a city and the city does not know you are there. Stop living in an environment and there's no change in temperature. Receive your fire back. Oh, make impact in that land. Make impact in that land tonight. Make impact in that land tonight. I speak life to you to make impact in that land tonight. The neutralization agenda will not catch up with you. In the name of Jesus, Father, in the name of Jesus tonight, I raise my voice concerning everyone that you have sent this word to. Anyone that is caught in the thick and the net and the pit, people who have drowned already, people who are already drinking alcohol, people who are already joining the band who are going to be, people that if we were to bring their company to see them right where they are now, they will shake their head like the friends of Job and say, this is not the friend we know. Father, in the name of Jesus, we stretch forth our hands to our brethren and we ask, Lord, that we baptize them. Let that prayer life rest- be restored tonight in the name of Jesus. Let that relationship with you, be- let that recall happen tonight. And Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that the relationship these men have with you, they will come back to their real state. And Lord, they will be on fire for you. In few weeks, in few days, even their environment will know that the lion is back. And that there is a lion here and they will roar. The demons around their localities, we know that there's a lion there. It will roar. All the silenced voices get back in the name of Jesus. As many as have been caught in the web of immorality, Lord, I pray for grace for them to confess their faults. Open up to someone to get help and let no general be lost. Let's start seeing the impact of your fire in the lives of these men, where they have found themselves. Joseph never went to Egypt. He was thrown there. He was sold there. But Egypt knew something came with him. May Egypt know what you came, what came with you. May Egypt know the God that travels in you. May that God not be not not be normal, not be neutral, not be silenced, not be not be handicapped, not be lame because of the environment. When they put the ark of God beside Dagon, Dagon's head demonstrated the presence of a God in Israel. Lord. Hey, Dagon will respond to your presence in the lives of this man in the name of Jesus. Oh my God. When you put an ark of the covenant beside Dagon and Dagon does not change, then the thing in the ark has been neutralized. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we will see the impact of this salt in the nations of the earth. And all these men under the sound of my voice will go back to their true state in you and return to their right, to their, to, to their, to their true nature in you. They are calling 
the real calling. Some of them are ministers called to ministry and become watchmen and messengers, ordinary messengers that are not doing anything, carrying tea, carrying pockets, carrying plates. Oh, Jesus. Uh, and if it were to advance an agenda, it will have been good. And not just to make money to eat. Father, in the name of Jesus, let your agenda take its place in the lives of these men. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. Pastor David, over to you. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Can we just lift up our voice and and, and say prayer for Pastor and say thank you for this, Father, and let there be virtue released. You would know that there are some kind of touches or there are some kind of meetings or there are some kind of um, meetings you enter, you know that virtue has come out. You know, many people were touching Jesus, but there was a particular touch that released something. Now, of course, if you are sensitive to the times and seasons, you will know that this meeting is a meeting where virtue went out because the meeting is so apt and so prompt and so sound. Can you say, Lord, let the, let, let virtue be released back to him? To your servant you have used to speak to us tonight, let virtue be released back to him. To your servant that you've used to, 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 to bless us tonight, let virtue be restored back to him. In Jesus' most precious name. We pray. Amen. Brethren, I, I don't want you to take this as a coincidence. My request tonight is that you don't take this meeting as just a random coincidence. It's a sound from heaven. It's a, it's a call from the throne of grace. Really, God is God spoke to us and God has released grace. The first thing I would say to us then is let's act upon the instructions. When the word of God goes, the Bible teaches us and lets us know that life goes with it. So the life and the empowerment to live by the word goes. I believe that many of us who have lost our voices, something has happened to us. You might not feel it physically, but something has happened. You might not feel anything in your body, but something has happened. I believe that grace to help has been poured. I believe that grace to help has been poured. I believe that a quickening has occurred. And I want to ask that this grace should not be in vain. That grace should not be in vain. Sam, you are listening and there was something on your life. You knew. And you know this thing is only you that we know. You might still be praying, but you know that that prayer you are praying is not the kind of prayer you should be praying. Yes, you might still be reading the word, but you know that, no, the normal you, the capacity of you is more than this. Can you, can you act upon the grace tonight and, and take actions to, to go back to the place where your voice is heard? You will not be like the salt that is trodden under foot, the foot of men. You will not be lukewarm that the God will now spit you out or Jesus will now spit out of his mouth because you are not even water, you are not even cold. You are just there. No. I pray again that the grace that has been released to us tonight, we would act upon it and utilize it to produce the result that heaven desires. Praise God. Very grateful. And I thank God for the School of Virtue. And I, if you are joining us and you're not a member of the School of Virtue, well, let me tell you a bit about us. This is the School of Virtue. Um, in us and through us shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Yes, we've, 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 God has been helping us. God has been giving us grace for a couple of years. And um, even now, we still have grace. If you, you can be a part of us in any way. Um, specifically from this meeting, there was a form that you were supposed to fill to be a part of this meeting. If you didn't fill that form, please don't ask that you fill the form. You might notice that the meeting did not talk about SOV before now. And I'm not even talking about SOV for any particular reason other than the fact that our goal is to help the body. So it is not that um, there, there's any other agenda except the fact that, as Daddy said, God is the one speaking. God is the one that wants his people to be alive again, to not be as dead men, to not be walking as men that are, that are cast down. So what you can do is um, please fill that form. 
the form that was tied to the to the notes on this meeting. Just please fill the form. Let us have your details. Um, there will be prayer going on, and there will be some um, news that might come to you based on how we can help ourselves. I know I'm in Canada, and for the SOV members in Canada, we have a Canada group, SOV Canada group, where one of the things we talked about is how do we help ourselves keep the fire? Because usually a company of men, Bible says, exhort one another daily, while this is called today, lest any of you be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin, which means that there's a place where one another can exhort one another. <laughs> you understand me? Uh, because you would you'd have people who can speak to you. And that's just one of the many things that might come out of this. So please fill those forms or fill that particular form. And um, if there's any word or news you hear from SOV, please um, receive it with joy and respond accordingly. Once again, um, thank you so much for joining tonight. I don't know if you've had ventilation from your spirits tonight, if you've had release from your spirit tonight, if you've just been touched or you've been chastised or you've been charged, whatever way the Lord hits you, I want to ask that you walk on that heat, walk, walk on that way the Lord hits you and pursue it so that um, you would be able to achieve God's purpose for your, your life. Can I, can I ask Pastor Dr. Lewis to just say one word uh, before we share the grace? Can I ask Dr. Lewis? I think Dr. Lewis is on chat. Uh, Dr. Lewis, uh, Dr. Larry Lewis, if, I, if he's here, if he's still here. Uh, okay, Dr. Lewis is is here. Please, can you please say one? Uh, thank you very much, sir. All right. Thank Good evening, my dear brothers and sisters. Um, this was a powerful word in season. Um, it is fire from the throne of heaven. It is oil to all our altars. And it is a timely um, warning, okay? All right. It's a timely warning for every one of us. Um, especially concerning the divine assignment that God has given each one of us. Um, what I can just say is this, right? Uh, the Bible says that the iron sharpened iron, so a friend the countenance of his friend. Um, one thing that we can do for ourselves is to try to strategically form ecosystem of ions, ecosystem of lions within where we are, right? And build on this. Because see, if you're alone, the Bible said that when, when, when he's alone, <laughs> when, when there is problem, he will die alone. So, but I remember one analogy that Pastor Koka used during the men's summit that was held, I think, 2019 or something like that. And he said that if there is somebody who is standing in between two, two brethren, right, and his hand is on their shoulders like this, that if for one reason or the other, that the, the, the person in the middle uses his leg to hit the stone and he sleeps, that mm -hmm. will he fall? No. And we all said he won't fall because his hand is on the shoulder of the two people beside him. So over time, because those two people are there, they will keep they will keep working, working, working. Then later it will get strength again and you now continue working. So the fire has been, I mean, um, this is something that I share with people that are with us here. Now, one of the mistakes that most of us make when we come into the system is that we do not know why we came. We did not connect with the, the agenda of God. And so when we come into this system, we lose out completely. So I believe that God is giving everyone an opportunity to realign. Mm -hmm. And let us, let us leverage. See, I usually use one analogy. I said that when the devil wants to take your house, 
we will go and start fire on the stove in the kitchen. And you will think that it is the stove in the kitchen that has problem. No, it is to distract you to the kitchen so that they will have time to take over the whole house. Mm -hmm. So whatever it is happening around us now, it's a distraction of against what is actually in front that he wants us to fulfill. So I, I, I want to thank God for Pastor Koka this evening, and I want to encourage each one of us. And I want you to just, can you just share a testimony of, uh, because I discovered that a lot of believers in, a, in diaspora, uh, the top popular trend is when you leave Nigeria and you enter uh, UK, for example, the next thing you are looking for is a fellow uh, association of Nigerian uh, um, right, Yeah. Okay. You know, so I saw that you were a devi deviant from that. And yeah. I want to just in one Thanks. and a half minutes, two minutes. Okay, just I'll quickly do that. Brief. I just want to take an input from that. Then after that, I will take Tessie Shumwe uh, right, to just bring an input from um, America. Tessie is uh, organizing our first um, grandchild um, national ladies camp international awesome. ladies come in america in tennessee Praise God. next month so Praise i would God. like to take a, a, a two minutes from how to so let me just All take right. from you okay quick one because now so, you are a pastor in a white church <laughs> <laughs> so so, uh, so i want you to i want you to just share that yeah so so um before we, before we left nigeria um god gave us a, a very direct instruction of why we're coming to, to Dundee, Scotland. And it was one of the instructions, there were many. One of them was that I will show you the church you will attend. So when we got here, I think for about seven months or thereabout, we were just joining Dada Deboe and uh, Pastor Koji online. And we were waiting, praying, waiting, praying, waiting. So the day that we will know where, God just showed the thing to my wife that, Go and draw up the list of all the Pentecostal churches in this in this land, and I'll show you the one that you're supposed to. Do. And he pointed that to here yeah, to her. And when she told me, I went to pray about it. That is, this is the Lord, and it was confirmed that that was it. Now, in the background, the pastor and the pastor's wife of the church where we attend now, they say that they have been praying that God should send a family that has children because there was no children in the church. The day that we went to the church, that very morning, God told the wife of the pastor that the family that is going to come with children are coming that day. And that is how mm. we came. Mm. Today, they now have children's church because mm. there are now children in the church, because more children are now in the church. Mm. Now, second thing that happened that is a bit puzzling to me, but it's not really puzzling because... God does not leave you in the dark. About a, about a month ago, a pastor came to, uh, no, let's say about six weeks ago, I was in a church, and while service was going on, God told me, the pastor is going to call you into the eldership of the church, so get ready. I said, eh, okay, all right. So You, you need to give after, us a little description of this church you are talking about. Okay. So the church is, is, is a white church, as in predominantly white church, uh, Dundee Elim Pentecostal Church, uh, very vibrant uh, leaders. And, and everything how many like blacks that. do you have? How many people of your color do you have there? Like 20? Uh, when we joined, we were the first. Wow. When wow. we joined, we were the first. Later, we started seeing maybe one, two, one, two, like that. Now we have more in the church. It's like God sowed the seed of Africans and Africans are now seed. coming in. God sowed the black seed. The truth, the truth of the matter is that the worship team, there was no black on the worship team. People that lead worship in the church, they were all white, right? Now you now have two blacks on the worship team. Now, one thing that surprised me. Oh, you were me the was, first set of black people when you came. Yes. When we came, first black family, I came. Now, the funny thing that happened that was really surprising to me, when the pastor now came and told me that, um, uh, Bro Luis, I mean, they call me Larry. Larry, I've been, I've been thinking about this thing over a while. 
But God told me over a year ago. Now, over a year ago was just a year that I came into the system. He said that the reason God told him, the reason why he did not come was because on a normal day, it takes about six to 10 years before they will invite somebody into eldership. But mm. God telling him to come and tell somebody to come and join that, he just a year in the church was a struggle for him because it was not normal. Because your own 10 years had been done in Nigeria. <laughs> they didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, so Pastor now, Dr. Lewis, so I need to, I need to, I, I need to pause to there. I, I need to pause us. there. So let me take Tessie. Thank you, sir. Tessie, uh, thank you, Dr. Lewis. Tessie, yes, please, sir. can you, uh, can I have Tessie? Uh, Tessie Shomoye. Uh, Tessie, where are you? Uh, I'm trying to look. Okay, I think I can find Tessie. Tessie, you can unmute and also, uh, and also put on your video as much as you can. So please, so we can have the visual uh, of you. All, all right, Tessie, you, you have the floor. Uh, you came into America just two minutes and just tell us uh, the, the kind of impact that God is using you to make right now. And tell us a bit about how you were bold enough to call a international ladies camp in Tennessee, Nashville, US. All right. No, your volume is very low. We will need to hear you. We'll probably remove the headpiece if you can, uh, as much as you can. And let's hear you very loud. Is it clearer right now? Yeah, very good now. Very, very clear. OK. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, Can you put your video on? Yes, I'm going to put it on. I was not preparing right. to be on. Yeah. All right, no, you have to. <laughs> okay, right. so, um, good, evening. Go good evening, everyone. So um, I came into the U.S. maybe going to like three, four, five years now. And um, I think I was just like facing my thing. Um, I wasn't, I didn't think ministry was going to come in. But I think one thing, despite everything that Pastor Shedwin and Dr. Lewis has said was accountability. Even being in the U.S., I made sure that um, I still stayed in touch with Pastor Shedon. Um, I would really say there were times that I knew that I did not really stay in touch, um, but I kind of carried him along with everything that was going on. And earlier this year, I got the instruction. I started a women's ministry last year, and um, after starting the women's ministry, um, it's been going to like more than a year now. Then earlier this year, I got an instruction to organize a conference. And the first thing I did was call Pastor Shegun. <laughs> um, I didn't tell him part of this story because in my head, I was like, Pastor Shegun is going to tell me, Tessie, just hold on, you know, calm down. That was what I was thinking in my head. But I was like, I'm going to call him and talk to him about it. And that was in January. And when I called him, he actually encouraged me and said a lot of things and all through the journey he has been helping like any updates I'm gonna tell him um it's so funny that even in the United States for those of us here we know how it is um the event center we got was given to us free and almost everything that came with the event center um so even the grace that works with you know the SOB ministry of like free registration, gift of men, um, every single thing like beyond my reasoning has just been coming together. Like how and, many volunteers do you have right now? Uh, and, right now, um, if I can think very, I have more than, so I have team leads like that are working in different capacity, food, media, registration. Are so people like registering five, already? Yes, people are registering, people are booking like about their how flights. how many people have registered now? Uh, I, don't fo I don't follow the registration, but the conference starts on Friday and I already have like up to like five people that are going to come in Thursday. We are going to pray together at my place. We are going to go for outreach on Friday. Then I have more like some of my brothers, um, some people that I don't even know. I just got connected to them. They're going to come. Like about how many people 
are you expecting in this camp meeting? Um, we wrote more than 500, but the all we take more than a thousand. <laughs> all right. So the expectation. Thank is you, Tessie. Thank, thank you, you Tessie. Uh, thank you, Tessie. Thank you. I thank God for that impute. Uh, beloved, I think we've done, we've, we've had it tonight. I just took those two examples to say, um, God didn't mean for you to just travel out to go and live, eat and die, and, and have electricity and, and, and have snow and take pictures with snow and, 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 and cardigans, all, all, all right? Uh, so God meant to have meat brought home from you based on his raising. Uh, Tessie is going to be leading over 500 women in Nashville, Tennessee, come July next month. And it's free, free. And I tell you, she's not a billionaire. She just finished her, educa her education in America. And she's just, a, a, a carrier of the same grace that we carry here. If it works in Nigeria, it works anywhere. He's not a respecter of currencies. People are giving them things. People are donating, people are sending, people are booking flights to fly down to that venue. She's not T.G. Jakes. She's just anointed. If God can use her, God can use you. And if she carries God, you carry God. Let your environment feel God that you brought to the diaspora. Have a great night tonight. My number is available. You can always reach out. If you want to send a private mail, you can send it to pastorshegunkoka at gmail.com. It's my new email, pastorshegunkoka at gmail.com. Just the words as it is, pastorshegunkoka at gmail.com. And you can always get in touch with our helpline. This is, has nothing to do with donations or anything. We want you to be who God wants you to be. There is a white church around your house. I don't know why everybody just wants to stay in Nigeria, in Canada. God didn't send us there to stay with ourselves. You could see the testimony of Dr. Lewis. Now he's a pastor in a white church that didn't have blacks, and now they have blacks because he stepped there first. That's a challenge. Some people say there's no church around my house and there are thousands of churches just because there is no redeem or there is no uh, Yasali Bible church. No, please don't get it twisted. There is a divine agenda. Good night, have a nice night or good afternoon or good day, wherever you are in the world. Please stay in touch. We don't call this meeting uh, uh, we don't call this meeting by, by, re, by religious exercise. If God calls it, we call it. And this is a uniquely called meeting by God for somebody listening to this. The videos will be uploaded on YouTube uh, and I believe that God will keep blessing you. Good night. God bless.